Hello everybody, glad you could make it. My name is Kaylee Ellen and welcome to this week's video. Today I would like to talk to you about a few plants that I no longer sell. Now I can stop selling something for a variety of reasons. It doesn't just have to mean that the plant has gone out of fashion or it's low value. It could be because it's difficult to care for. Maybe I've just had bad experiences with them. Maybe they don't ship well. There's a variety of reasons really. So I'd like to talk to you about some of those today. There's also some bullshit reasons why I don't sell certain things as well. Which which believe me we will get into. Some of the plants on this list I do technically sell at the moment but my point is I won't really be buying them in anymore. I won't really be selling them anymore. Once these guys are gone they're probably going to stay gone for a little while. I'm not that bothered. I'm just not that bothered. So the first plant I'm going to talk to you about today should honestly be literally zero surprise, like not even 1% if you watch my channel all the time. I have made such a fuss about this plant in the past. I've done nothing but moan about it, admittedly. And it turns out you guys have too. A lot of you guys agree with me on a lot of things I say about this plant. So I want to talk to you about the Philodendron 69686. Yes, if you're not familiar with the plant, that is literally its name. Now, one cool thing about this plant is that it is sort of reminiscent of a much more expensive plant, which is the Philodendron UPI. Now, it's not identical, of course it's not. That would be weird, it's plants, but it's kind of similar. So if you're looking for something like UPI, maybe you want to go for it. I can't fully recommend it because of the things I'm about to say about it, because honestly, it's a nice plant, it looks very pretty, but it kind of sucks in a lot of ways. The main reason that this plant sucks for me personally, and for a lot of you guys it turns out as well, is how badly it ships. And I am not joking here. This plant ships absolutely horribly. It doesn't matter how well rooted this plant is. I've sent out plants that are brilliantly rooted and the exact same thing happens to about nine out of 10 plants that I used to ship. Literally guys, nine out of 10 plants. That is ridiculously high for what I would call a failure rate on shipping. Now, yes, again, and I will probably repeat myself throughout this video, a few yellow leaves and things like that can be normal in shipping, okay? It can. No one can expect when you put a plant in a box that it's going to get there and there's not going to be any damage, whether it be mechanical damage from being moved around in the box or just general stress or something like that. No one can really expect no damage. It can happen, but you shouldn't expect it when you order plants online and they are mailed to you. But this plant goes... This plant just takes the cake. It absolutely takes the cake with how ridiculous it actually is. So if I send out a four leaf plant, I might have a customer telling me that within three or four days of receiving the plant, the plant has one leaf left. It is literally that dramatic. I know I've spoken about this on my channel a lot before and a lot of you guys have said in the comments, you know, oh my God, same, same. A few of you, I think are shop owners and you've told me that you've stopped selling it as well and you won't really touch it just because it's not really worth it. When it gets to that point. And I know a lot of people have said in the past, oh, why don't you just sell something and put a disclaimer on it that, you know, it doesn't do well in shipping and stuff like that. And it's like, well, I could do that, except I'm still liable if it goes wrong. So what it ends up doing is, as a seller, this plant costs me more money to sell than it would ever cost to keep and grow and do whatever with. If it can't ship out without me having to refund something, I've basically lost all my money and my time growing the plant. So really there's no point. As a plant itself, yes, it's gorgeous, can't fault it. And again, it does look like something else, which is really cool. But to ship out is the main reason that I don't like it. To ship out is just a nightmare. They are so prone to just losing those leaves. It doesn't even have to rot necessarily, although they do like to do that too. Oh, it's just not a headache that anybody needs. If you have one at home and you've got it past that stage and you've taken it back from the brink of death, great, congratulations, <laughs> great plant. But if you're not doing that and you're trying to sell it, I probably wouldn't do that. The next plant I'd like to talk about is the Philodendron Pareso Verde. Now, I've never really managed to like this plant. I'm going to start right there. I just haven't. I've tried. Believe me, I've tried to like this plant, but I just can't. I just can't. I just feel like there are so many other plants that can do the job of this plant and look a bit better doing it. And it just... <sighs> It's the way it grows, okay? It is so dang gangly. What do I mean by gangly? Well, the petioles on the plant are really, really long and they, they don't necessarily tip upwards like a bilati can, for example, a philodendron bilati. That plant can be very, very rigid when it grows and it's quite nice. To be fair, a lot of plants can, but this is one of these plants that just doesn't really like doing that as much. It can be a little bit floppy and there'd be nothing wrong with the plant at all. Similarly, the leaves are about the same. The leaves can be very, very paper thin and ruffly and they never really, they never really hold the form that you really want them to. I find the petioles are longer than the leaves anyway, so it, it doesn't really give off the vibe 
that you'd kind of want. Also, what else is wrong with it? Can you tell I have a laundry list? I think the space in between the nodes where the petioles are is very, very long on a Pareso Verde as well, which all just generally adds into it being pretty gangly. There are a few other problems with Pareso Verde. The main one I would say would just be keeping that colouring. If you cut them, in my experience, they tend to revert. It's not permanent, by the way, it will come back. I'm pretty sure it's heat that activates the patterning. So if you've got a problem with bringing back that mottling on the leaves, try just bumping the heat. So essentially just slap it under a grow light and put it closer and you should get a better result out of it. I just find it's really hard to get a pretty looking sellable Pareso. They propagate fantastically by the way and they grow stupidly, stupidly, stupidly fast. So if it's a plant that you enjoy, excellent. You've got a really good plant there. It's going to grow really quickly. And if you want to propagate it and give it to friends or sell it, then awesome. Good for you. I'm not saying it's not a sellable plant because I'm pretty sure they ship quite well. So it's a reasonably tough plant. It's just mainly for me it's an appearance thing and it's more hassle than it's worth. I just, every time I have a Pareso Verde and I take it from a shelf to photograph to sell, I just look at it and I'm just like, ah, it just could be something so much better. If you like that plant, don't take it personally, it's just not a plant I like, but the Pareso Verde, it's such a shame because you know what, I see some really nice Instagram pictures of this plant, I'm not denying there aren't great plants out there, but on the whole for me personally, it's just not my bag at all. It's not my bag at all. I think they've come down in value as well. I'm not actually sure how much they are now. They could be double digits. Don't like to speak out of term without knowing. If you know how much they tend to be, please leave a comment, of course. They've come down to a nice price, but I just, I just don't like them. I just don't like them. Let me know if you agree with me on that, because I think a few people are sort of in agreement with the whole gangly petiole thing. But let me know what you think in the comments, because I want to know if it's just me. So the next plant or plants I would kind of bracket this as that I no longer sell would be the Alocasia family. And I will kind of add an addendum onto that just to say that I do occasionally sell alocasia. It's not that I don't sell any. I do have a fair few variegated alocasia that pop up here and there. And you will have seen them probably on the site. But I have to add strict warnings with these plants that you essentially have to be prepared for them to sort of die back to the comb. I don't mean die. I just mean lose a lot of leaves. Alocasia are just notorious for not shipping well. They can rot quite easily as well, I find. If you transplant them, you know, out of one substrate to another or even just me taking them out of Lekka to ship. I often get, you know, emails saying, hey, this has just kind of gone dead. So alocasia, although I love them, I love alocasia plants, they aren't the easiest aroid anyway. They're not a very easy aroid to neglect, but the shipping is a bit of an issue. And honestly, when I buy alocasia in, it doesn't really matter how good they look in the photographs. If I'm looking for an alocasia to buy, and this is a great tip if you are looking for a variegated alocasia of any type, okay, don't get too hung up on what each leaf looks like, right? Literally, because you might lose a lot of them. If it's in potted soil, you might be okay. But if it's anything else, if it's got to be sent internationally and it has to be bare root or in moss, you can expect some problems there, quite honestly. But don't get too caught up on what each leaf looks like. Look for the overall general spread of variegation, if that makes any sense. So if the plant seems to overall have 50-50 variegation, it's probably a good plant to have. If it's low, then obviously that you need to consider that in your purchase. If it's too high, you need to consider that too, because it's going to die even quicker. Generally speaking, do not get attached to a specific leaf. When you're looking at something online, you think that's a really pretty plant, try and just check yourself, take a step back and think, okay, am I prepared to lose that? Would I still be happy if that plant was a corm and I had to grow it out? Because if the answer is no, then maybe a variegated alocasia might not be for you and you might want to go for a variegated something else, like a syngonium or something that's like sort of similar. Do you know what I mean? So just be careful there when you're buying them in. And it's the same for me. When I buy something in, I just have to not really take too much notice of the general color on the leaves. As long as it's got good spread of variegation, I know that the comb itself is good and it's probably going to sprout back quite nicely. So... Little tip if you're buying them. You will see them on my site, but you won't see them very much. And honestly, that's kind of the reason why. They're just a little bit too much hassle. Beautiful plants though, and I'm probably going to put one in my house because I don't have to ship that there. So you may see some in my house because I miss them terribly and really miss alocasia, but not so much on my website. Okay, let's talk about an anthurium and... Uh, I've been feeling this way for a while about this anthurium. And again, I do sell them, but I don't plan on really buying any more. I might keep a small tray of these back just in case they come back into fashion again, sell them in the future. But I'm, 
just not feeling this anthurium. So what is it, you ask? I'm talking about the anthurium regal, or regale, or however you want to talk about it. So there's a couple of reasons, transparently, why I'm not really selling these. I might have a clear out of them, but generally, I don't tend to put them up much. The first reason, and one of the main reasons, is that they have tanked in value a lot. And I know I've mentioned this on previous videos, but honestly, guys, don't go paying triple digits for one of these plants unless it is literally a plant with like five leaves like this. Okay, don't. Just don't. I think now, I don't like to speak again without full research, but I'm pretty sure they are mid double digits in the UK. I'm pretty sure it's going to be similar somewhere else. I might be wrong, of course. And if I am wrong, please list your country and what the situation is there. Of course, you can do that for any plant on this list, but generally, they are very, very low value now. And for me personally, it ends up costing more to sell them than what I even end up buying in sometimes. So it's not really worth it for me. That's actually only one reason, though, why I don't keep these plants. Another reason is these plants are more prone to bacteria than other anthurium, actually. Of course, you can get it on other plants, but for some reason, Regal just hate their lives. This is the same when they go through the shipping process as well. They're very, very likely to go crispy. Other anthurium tend not to. Um, you've got crystallinum forgetii, stuff like that. They tend not to do it, but for some reason Regal does. They just hate life. They're quite a hard anthurium to keep. Are they worth it? Yeah, I think they're beautiful, honestly. There's not many plants on this list today that I hate and I don't like the look of. This is a nice plant, but they're just a bit of a nightmare to keep. They don't grow the best. And I think that's why we find that, I mean, this is the case with a lot of anthurium, to be honest with you, but when sellers sell these, they're sold with one leaf on because the other leaf just doesn't stay great looking for long. And I'll hold my hand up. That happens with me as well. If it happens to you, you're not alone. It's a harder anthurium to keep happy because my other anthuriums, I can send crystalline them out or forgetty eye out with several leaves and they look great. But for some reason, Regal just does not happen. And it doesn't even matter what form of regal it is. I do have some Peruvian form as well, which look a bit different. They are regal, but they look a bit different. Same thing. They're just a nightmare to take care of. They really are. There is a notable difference in how my regal behave compared to all of the other velvety anthuriums that are getting exactly the same care that surround them. They're just constantly full of problems. And I know I'm not the only one that knows this. I've just spoken to a friend the other day that is sick to death of hers. And she's thinking about just giving it away because it's just a nightmare. And to be fair, they're not worth much. So even to sell them now is semi-difficult, if I'm honest with you. So not a great plant. Will you see them again from me? Yeah, sure. There'll be one or two. Will you maybe see them again in a couple of years time when they sort of come back around and become more rare again because people stopped caring and stopped buying them and stopped keeping them? Yeah, maybe. But for now, they're not something I put my energy into. I'm going to be totally honest. Right, this next one's weird. I admit this one's weird. I've had it on my channel like twice ever and y'all have never heard from it again. I do still have the plant. I have a few plants of it that have come from the one mother plant. I have some cuttings, but they just grow like shit. And I don't actually know if I'm the only person that experiences this. So let's find out, shall we? So I'm going to talk today about, I think it's called the Philodendron Corsinianum, Corsinianum X. I got this plant. I'm not even sure when, you know. It might have been 2020. I feel like, maybe, or 2021. I feel like it was 2020, it was a long time ago. And uh, this plant, it, it's a beautiful plant, don't get me wrong. If you've seen big specimens, they look awesome. And I do think they're worth it. If you're not trying to sell them, I think they're worth it. I don't know how much money they still go for now, actually. I don't think they go for super cheap or anything, but obviously they're probably nothing like what they were. But then again, you could say that about most plants, right? Everything's kind of come down a lot. But this plant to look after, honest to God, I just, I don't know what it is. I've just had a, a myriad of problems with this plant. I can't even give you more information than that, other than every so often I have a brown leaf drop off and the plant seems fine and it's getting the same care as everything else. It doesn't seem to size up very well for me. It doesn't seem to be very quick growing for me. I don't think it likes me. Now, if you have this plant or you know of somebody that has this plant, honestly, I'm really curious to know if this is just me and my shit care or the plant is just generally a bit shit. Beautiful, but shit to care for. So if you know what the tea is with that plant, I would love to know because I have a weird hunch it is just me. 
but I don't know. Normally for me, I think a plant's care, it becomes very obvious in my unit where everything gets more or less the same care. That's kind of why I only stock certain plants because they all need to fit into a general umbrella of care. That's how I'm easily able to talk about them on this channel because it's all kind of the same. That's why I don't tend to do care videos so much. But it's been the odd one out for a while and it's not just one of the plants, it's all of those plants. So it does make me think that it might not be me, but I don't know. I don't know. I'm willing to accept that it is me. So again, if you know, then do let me know down below because I, I need to know the answer to this one majorly. Oh, I love this plant so much. This is not a plant that I find ugly. I absolutely adore this plant. This is the Philodendron Serpens. Now, this plant is not everyone's cup of tea. I get it. There are also other plants out there that are honestly easier than this, but look similar to this. It is one of the hairiest plants out there. So if you don't like that, you're not gonna like this. Now, I thought these were easy care and I, I don't know if it's just because my conditions have changed from my old shop to my new shop, but in my old shop, I grew them quite well, but I suspect it was a lot drier. In the new shop, I can't seem to grow them very well at all. They mysteriously rot. And if you guys remember ages ago, I had a big, beautiful serpent growing in the shop. That just died. It didn't even survive. I have one other serpent in the shop that is mine. Uh, it's a baby and it's barely grown. But to be fair, I have neglected it, to be fair. But they're just a bit shit. Spider mites love them because the leaves are so, so thin. Spider mites just eat that shit up all day long. So they're not ideal for pests either. But the thing is about these plants, it's not that I wouldn't sell them again, to be honest. I would probably like to give them a go, but not anytime soon. And that is because there is a sort of new plant in town that's kind of taken over the desire for those a little bit. And this one took me by surprise, but I'm going to mention it very briefly because it is tied to the serpents. That would be the Philodendron Squamiferum blood, I think it's called, or dark or whatever you called it. I hauled it a little while ago and... <laughs> Y'all went wild. Like <laughs> I knew it looked good on camera, but y'all went wild for that. That was ridiculous. I think they're in a little bit of demand right now. And I know for a fact the cost price on them went right the hell up after that video. So you're not the only one that got stung by that, by the way. I'm also stung by that. I didn't buy any more in. Yikes. Literally yikes on that price increase. And I know that some of you will know what I'm talking about. That was insane. But what I will say is those plants, 10 times easier than the serpents. And they look a bit similar, to be honest. They're not far off. And they're dark, which is even better. They're not quite as hairy on the petiole, but they're a good alternative. So I kind of wanted to just put that in now. So if you love serpents and you're kind of sad to hear that they're not the best care or whatever, or at least not as good as I thought they were, then maybe you might want to consider this one. Now, I don't know where you're going to find it. I'm sure there'll be private sellers having it. I know I have some again, but I'm not selling them just yet. I need to propagate them a little bit more because the cost price has gone up too much for me to then buy more in. So I'll be propagating some. I'm sure that people that have already got them will be propagating them too. You might have to hunt for them a little bit though, I suspect, but you will probably maybe have to pay a bit of a price. And I'm only saying that based on the cost price because it went up. I don't even know how much. It, mo it weighed well more than doubled, I think. It was a lot. So if you want it, have a look for it. I mean, if you want a serpent, go for it. Not stopping you. But they aren't super easy for me anymore. And as of right now, anyway, I'm not going to be stocking them for a little while. Oh, this next plant, honestly, I genuinely, it catfished me. It catfished me. And I don't mean by your appearance. I just mean how bloody difficult it is to actually take care of. And I had no idea because the one I had behaved itself for quite a while and now it's just riddled with problems. I'm talking bacterial rust. I'm talking all of it. It is not the best plant and I thought it was. So I retract what I said about this plant. But hey, you live and you learn, right? So I'm talking about the Philodendron Linamii and it is gorgeous, right? Honestly, it is gorgeous. If you want something that comes in with really pink, pretty leaves and then glosses down to a green. So it's not super exciting, but it's exciting enough. This is probably the plan for you, but I have to warn you, the issues with bacterial rust that I've had on these plants, specifically that, by the way, it's off the chain. It is off the chain. And I do not know why. They're obviously just very, very prone to it. I'm not going to linger on this plant very long because I don't have much else to say other than that. Because they do grow at a reasonable pace. They're not super, super, super slow. They're slower than I thought they would be for a crawler. I wouldn't say that they behave like any of my other crawlers, to be honest. You know, Gloriosum, Plamanii, stuff like that. Like, they don't behave like that at all. If you want a fast-growing crawler, go for a Gloriosum or a Plowmanii or something. I don't really think this is the crawler for you. If you're collecting them, go for it. Not trying to shit talk it too much. 
but I'm kind of selling off the ones I have to be honest and I have been doing so for a while just here and there but because they get rust a lot and other things it's a bit difficult to even sell them at a piece so I have some I think I have a tray of them they will be coming out here and there but I wouldn't expect to see a huge amount of them in my shop at all they just I can't be bothered with that you know what I mean I can't be bothered with it Right, the last, <laughs> the last thing I want to talk about today is it's more political than anything else, to be honest. I just, I don't agree with it, guys. And it's kind of, it's one of the things that I would argue underpins my selling and my channel a little bit as well. But the number one thing that I refuse to sell in my shop is bullshit variegates, right? And I don't mean viruses. I don't mean anything like that. I literally mean a Monstera that's variegated or something like that. And someone gave it a dumbass name to sell more of it. Or what was it? The go Like, for example, Florida Ghost Mint, right? That plant doesn't exist. I know you all have heard me talk about it a lot. If you haven't and you want to know what I'm talking about, Florida Ghost Mint doesn't exist. I will link a video in my description that is a little old, but it definitely serves the purpose. It will tell you all about it and it will tell you how to get your Florida Ghost whiter because they're gorgeous plants, but they need to be that beautiful creamy white color. I have a video all about that and I talk about mint very briefly as well. So if you want to see that, link is down below. But that whole thing encompasses shit that I just do not think is right in our how would you say, plant selling world. And it's just because I refuse to charge more for something that just has a little bit of variegation. Another example of this is when I sell Philodendron Giganteum, right? I have some variegated ones, obviously, and some are more variegated than others. If a uh, Giganteum has really high variegation, I may, may label it high variegation, okay? But I'm not gonna call it weird names or anything like that. I'm just not gonna do that. Now, don't get me wrong, in some cases, sometimes plants are registered cultivars, and that's fine. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about when people just make up silly names. The amount of different, anything really, pink princesses. Like, I think people have been talking about pink princess marble or something. It's like, come on, no, 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 no. You look, if you want to do that in your shop as a private seller, you do you, but I'm not personally comfortable with charging more for something that I know is random. I don't like it. Unless it's something that is persisted across a plant, like for example, this is an example of something I would differentiate to sell it and I would label it as something different. That would be if you've seen my Queen Anthurium that looks different from the other one, I call it Handlebar Boy, because his lobes are very separate. The sinus is huge. That's persisted for a period of years now. That plant has never not thrown leaves that are like that. I would almost go as far to say it might not be a full-on Warraqueenum, it might be something else. But that said, if I was going to sell some of that plant, I would label that separately because I'm absolutely sure that that plant is not doing this randomly. It's not environment, it is just persisting to be like that and I find that to be a little bit different. With variegation, I think we should take variegation with a little bit more of a pinch of salt. I honestly do. I honestly do. Variegation is is a whole thing in itself, and I should probably do a video on purchasing variegation, if that makes any sense. You know, should you buy this plant? Yes, no, because of these reasons. Maybe I could do that, by the way. Maybe we could do some case studies, and I'll show you a photograph of a plant, and then you all vote, you know, with your minds anyway. If you would buy it, I would tell you if I would buy it and why. That might be a really good video, actually. If you want that, please leave a comment, because I've just thought of it now, and it sounds like a good idea. But, yeah, that's what I mean. There's certain instances where, yeah, okay, maybe you would do that. And my Queen Anthurium is an example of that. But there's a lot of instances when I see people just making shit up, guys. And I know you've seen it too. It's all over Facebook. It's rife. Now, I don't think shops do it so much. I think it's mainly private sellers. And I'm not trying to shit on anybody. I'm honestly not. I'm just giving my opinion. I can't personally buy into all of that. I think if I had a Monstera Aurea that was doing something a little bit different, unless it was categorically doing something different and, and offshoot cuttings were producing the same thing, maybe I might sell it as you know, Monstera Aurea, and then put some sort of explanation afterwards as to why I think it's different. But the one thing I will not do is give it a name. Because once you give something a name, it implies that it is a somehow different plant. And I do not like that. Because it is something, and it is, guys, I'm sorry, but it is, it is something that sellers have previously used to get more money out of people. And the classic example is, again, the Florida Ghost Mint. There's so many people I had they were asking me in 2020 if Florida Ghost Mint were in stock 
because they had a Florida ghost and they wanted a mint. And I would tell them, I'm really sorry, they don't exist. You have what you need. Do you know what I mean? I'm not going to sell you that. I don't have it. It doesn't exist. And I need you to know it doesn't exist. So look, if you're going to do that, you do you. I'm really not here to tell people what they should and shouldn't be doing. I can't control anybody. But for me personally, I don't like it and I would not buy into it. With a few exceptions of the things I've just mentioned, really. But it was just kind of a wide, a wide descriptor of some things that I just will not partake in at all. And I believe that concludes this video. Let me know what you think about anything I've said. Please do let me know about the care on some of these plants because I do want to know if it's just me. Because it could be, you know, I don't know why people think I'm like the best plant person in the world and my care is amazing and all this. It's, I'm just like you guys. I literally, things don't grow for me that do grow for you guys. And I find that out all the time, you know, in my comments when you guys talk to me. So please don't assume that if I say something is super difficult, that it is, you know, it's difficult for everyone. Maybe 696866 six, six is. But generally, you know, other people have different experience because you have different environments and you have different way of caring for your plants. So please bear that in mind. And don't necessarily be put off by every plant I've mentioned today or anything like that. You do you. If you want to get something or you want to sell something, you go do it. This is simply just my opinion. Thank you very much for watching this video, guys. If you'd like to see any more of my content and you are not already subscribed, I would love it if you could do that. Similarly, you can follow me on my socials here. I do pop off a little bit on Twitter every now and again. It's not necessarily plenty though, but I do pop off on Twitter every now and again. And of course you have my Instagram and all the rest. I do have a Facebook now as well, which I'm trying to get up and running just so I can put videos out and you guys can get video notifications a little bit better because YouTube's not so good at that anymore. So if you want to follow that, you can follow that as well. That is it for this week's video, guys. I will see you in the next one. Bye.